All right, everyone, it's time to try to teach the uneducated, which is, you know, no small task, of which Biden claims to be a member, although I see through it. When Biden says, well, we're going to transition off fossil fuels and ban fracking, which he has pledged to do, just so that we're aware that is the case, um, he's full of shit. <laughs> he can do exactly what Obama did. Obama was like, well, climate change is our number one priority. The world is dying. He read a Thunberg Act. What does he do in office? And, and I've praised him profusely for this because it really buffed up the U.S. economy. The biggest positive thing that Obama ever did was stand back, ignore the left, ignore the environmental lobby, and allow fracking and oil exploration leading to the world's largest fuel boom literally over the last few years. We've rediscovered lakes of oil under Texas because of new drilling. We found that, uh, that the energy resources in North America are, hard, are barely tapped. We thought that we were running out of all these critical resources. Hell to the no, it turns out we've got the world's largest reserves of most critical fuels. We're, we're riding sky high right now. One reason we're not in a depression is because our energy sector got so strong. Really, to the point where the OPEC countries were trying to deliberately stymie us uh, uh, to make it unprofitable. and They refused to shut down some production because they wanted to put the screws to U.S. oil firms and gas firms. We're number one now, I think, in natural gas, too. We're, we're net oil exporter. Um, what happens here is that Biden is pandering to the left, which is, you know, reasonably wise, all things considered, considering that they're far more fired up in this election. But he risks, certainly, in a state like Pennsylvania or Texas, certainly, and, I, and Texas I still don't think is really legitimately in play, uh, risks losing large swaths of the population, which is, uh, it revolves around energy. The problem with trying to ban the fossil fuel industry or transition away from gas and so forth, do you realize how many products out there are either made using or made with petroleum? <laughs> it's far more than just gasoline in your car. Uh, lubricatory fluid, plastics, every aspect of agriculture from seed to store. If you were to try to eliminate, I mean, I realize that there are other energy resources, but then you run into a second problem, right? The kind of equipment used to mine the materials necessary for batteries and solar cells, to get, to get the aluminum out of the ground for windmills, the, the, the cement and steel and so forth for hydroelectric dam building, certainly nuclear reactors, and the uranium mining, those all require fossil fuel. Essentially, the only way around this is to develop electrical systems that are efficient enough so that they can, in a compact form, be uh, done with solar using essentially robots and drones. It would be a largely automated system. What you need to achieve is, and I've spoken about this, the idea of a uh, solar-powered solar panel factory in which all of the input and output is handled by that same energy source and in which the energy generated on the structure itself is greater than, is greater than the need to break even. The problem is we don't have that level of efficiency yet. Now, we can certainly approach it with certain, you know, the, 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 the time-saving mechanisms, uh, energy-saving mechanisms, uh, sorry. Um, we can make things more efficient. We have been, you know, over the years, cars generally get more miles to the gallon, unless you're talking about the SUVs. I remember when those were the considered the devil back in the Bush administration era. Remember when, when the economy dropped out, all the SUVs were basically abandoned. People started buying subcompacts from Europe and Japan, uh, which, by the way, it is more efficient. You don't really, I, I hate to use the term need because you know, liberals use this for like guns and, and speech and everything else. Really though, like if I had a choice and I'm one person, do I really need to have, you know, the six door SUV? I'm kind of wasting money and it's really, there's no purpose to it. I might have a pickup if I'm doing like construction or something, I have my tools in the back or something. I got to haul gravel all day. Yeah, let me get this Subaru. I don't think that that's going to work. Let, let me get my, my old 80s era Saab. Uh, but uh, petroleum is used in everything and it's used in computing. Again, mining is a big thing. In order to create the energy system, in order to create green energy systems, you have to mine all sorts of minerals and metals out of the ground. You have to. You can't do that with solar power. We don't have the technology at the moment. You can't use windmills. You could have like electric drones that would, you know, be able to refuel themselves and so forth, but even the components for them initially have to be pulled out of the ground by heavy machinery that is, it would be at the very least inefficient, if not technologically at this moment impossible to extract the resources using that particular form of energy. 
it's simply, it's not capable of delivering the torque necessary to drive a, a 200 foot long drill into the side of a mountain and then you've got to manufacture explosives. You've got to use all sorts of chemicals that need uh, to be manufactured in order to extract these materials. Rock crushers, a solar powered rock crusher would be a sight to behold, but I think you'd end up with, you'd need a lot of solar panels, dude. <laughs> It'd take some time. And then of course any damage in a hailstorm and then you get other problems. I support green energy. Um, I do believe that over time, and we've seen this, technology is making solar fairly quickly the most efficient potential energy source for most uses. Certainly home solar is already fiscally feasible, except that the government and the United States keeps taxing people on everything. The business taxes on the installation and the regulatory cost is like 40% of the cost of a home solar system. You realize that? The average middle classer would absolutely not not only be able to afford, but would jump at the chance to to get a home solar system. Except that so much extra cost is added in the in terms of regulation and taxation by the government. Some states have removed the subsidy that they used to give. You, Vermont used to give a considerable write-off on your taxes if you installed a solar system, a qualifying system. I think they let that lapse. Well, no. Oh, I wonder why fewer solar panels are going up. I, I mean, and. For, for one purpose, it's interesting to be in a country that's so green energy geared. Because here, like solar and like windmills are everywhere. I personally don't have a problem with the windmills. Some people, they call them bird choppers, I guess, in Germany <laughs> informally. And they're like, oh my god, it's going to kill off the endangered species. Well, it is an efficient way to get energy overall. It's, you know, it's a reasonably high output uh, for a relatively small area on the ground. If you're putting it out in, you know, farmland nice flat windy land where there's really nothing to you know impede by building the windmill yeah that's an efficient way to get rural electricity I've been going on for a long time solar for certainly the suburbs uh, rural homes you know off the grid living uh, they're all great things but that doesn't mean that petroleum magically is not part of the plastic manufacturing process that literally look around you right now just look around the room that you're in how many products in that room how many objects have been involved with petroleum. If you answered virtually 100%, you are absolutely correct. Even the food, like the plants behind me, these were grown in a greenhouse. The agribusiness that was responsible for growing them uses oil-powered tractors, probably uses natural gas at some level. Fossil fuel is involved. The, the, the components used to build the greenhouse, the metals, they were mined with fossil fuels. The glass was smelted down using an energy source related probably to fossil fuel, at least in a roundabout way. Even if it came from a nuclear plant, that uranium was mined out of the ground by dump trucks that are fucking 40 feet long and use lots and lots of diesel fuel. It's just the way that it is. Fossil fuel ain't going anywhere. You could make a, a pitch for getting rid of coal as arguably the, the dirtiest uh, resource. Of course, if Biden does that, he loses Pennsylvania and several other states and thus the election, uh, which is why he's not going to say it. And Democratic politicians, they always talk a big game about climate change this, climate change that. Look at their actual track record over the last 20 years. Have they actually made any significant overtures that didn't involve a new tax or new regulations? Do, do these people have their private jets? Have they, can, have they decided, well, I don't need that extra home? Oh, have they installed a windmill outside of their home? Did they vote in favor of the solar project in their backyard? Did their worthless 40-acre lawn that's completely non-biodiverse, did they decide to plant it over Varg style and grow like a food forest? No, they don't do any of this shit. They don't do any of it. They suck up to the fossil fuel industries. If Biden's like, he'll probably increase their subsidies. By the way, that's the other point. When Biden says he's going to remove the subsidies on oil and gas and so forth, you will pay more because they're involved with every product and energy. So much more money for every single product in the United States if that happens, which means more importing. It means more offshoring of US jobs. It means less US industry. That's not a good thing. It would be very damaging if you were to rob the subsidies from this industry. What you wanted, what, if you want subsidies at all, what you should do is just up the green energy subsidies. Why don't you restore more tax credits for people that put in home solar? Instead of building these big China-backed 100-acre solar farms out on land that could be used, you could let it get forested. You could, you could set it aside as a habitat for a turtle or something. It's like, remember the Bundy Ranch thing? Over the grazing rights on that land? You remember that started that fracas that they called terrorism, but 
And Amon Bundy got off on all charges and is a free man. Uh, it was about an endangered species of tortoise that lived in that area. So they didn't want the cattle coming along to graze. Amon Bundy was grazing there for a thousand years because he's a thousand years old. No, 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 you can't do that. It's an endangered turtle. They have a big standoff. As soon as he's off the land, what do they do? They sell it to China for a solar development. Now, which one's going to kill more turtles? A handful of cows or horses or something? Or literally blanketing the entire area with solar panels? The, the, the whole thing was just a money grab. They didn't give a fucking... The Bureau of Land Management didn't give a fuck about the turtles. About fucking tortoise. They didn't give a shit. They'd eat them. They probably do. They probably eat turtle soup every fucking day. These rich people and into some weird shit. Uh, ever see eyes wide shut? Uh, but this is superstition. The, the war on oil makes no sense. It can't be won. There are too many products. Even if you talk about eliminating gas cars or something, that would just raise the price of all the other projects, uh, products too because you'd throttle the supply. You'd have to get it from abroad. Uh, manufacturing would be elsewhere in countries that had more fiscal sense. Biden's not crazy enough to do that. Again, another way in which he'll backstab the left if elected. Don't expect him to do jack shit about the fossil fuel industry. It'll be his first promise broken. In the first hundred days, first promise broken if Joe Biden is elected. He's not going to do jack about oil. And he's not going to do jack about fracking either. He wants to. It would be good for show. It would be good for getting all that green energy lobby money and all of the the hipster kids to vote for him, half of whom are probably uh, in this election too young, Gen Z will pile aboard Uncle Joe. Oh, he's such a great guy. He's saving the world like Greta Thunberg wants to. Oh shit, why does my Apple product suddenly cost twice as much? Why did my Starbucks latte suddenly jump 50 cents in price? Man, I'm gonna have to give up some tendies. Mom tells me that my tendies are too expensive now. Chicken's real. Why, why did this happen? And why is it all made in China anyway? Why is it, I used to get this US free trade certified coffee beans company went under. Now I have to get them from India or, to, or imported from Thailand or something. I wonder fucking why. That's about all. Peace out.